Hello everyone. Welcome to my class on advanced phonology. In the previous six session, we have already started to discuss how optimality theory as a branch of generative grammar or generative phonology has began its journey. We have also talked about briefly how Alan Prince and Paul Smolensky's widely circulated manuscript Optimality Theory Constraint Interaction in Generative Grammar was a very well received manuscript and it has also received attention from the linguistic community. Optimality Theory, what it is? It is actually, if you want to answer it in a in one sentence, you can say that it is a general model of how grammars are structured. So when we say grammars, the word grammar, we actually mean the linguistic components that are present within a language's structure or structural composition. So basically grammars do not, do not correspond to the prescriptive grammatical rules which are there in a school book or what you have to say or what is right or wrong. But what we actually know about our native languages is the grammar of a language. So there are two distinctions of grammars. One is prescriptive grammars, where we are taught how to say or how to speak uh, certain forms of a language that is prescriptive. And the other one is descriptive. So in linguistics, we actually talk about the descriptive component of grammar. So in this word, when we say grammar, actually we mean the grammatical or linguistic components that are present in the native speaker's mental lexicon. There are a few more definitions. If you want to say definition about op on optimality theory, you can also say that it is a theory of grammar which focuses on conflicts between the different ideals that linguistic utterances try to attain. So these are some uh, somehow more uh, detailed uh, description of OT and uh, this requires a little bit of engagement with the theory to understand. At the very beginning, uh, this is just the second session with you on optimality theory. So um, we do not expect that you will understand every bit of it. Uh, secondly, a structure is grammatical according to optimality theory or according to generative grammar at a large scale any structure is grammatical if it manages to get as close to fulfilling these principles as possible so in the second point you can see a structure is grammatical that means a native speaker of a language will say that okay this particular form sounds grammatical to me okay when he or she will say that it's a grammatical form in my language that form will has to manage to get as close to the to fulfilling these principles as possible and what are these principles those principles are defined by the languages specific terms and terminologies a language define its own terms and conditions tnc applied you know we see this uh, tnc applied in many of the endorsements that we uh, actually look at or we eat or we subscribe to right so as a native speaker of uh, let's say assamese if i say this sentence moi ghoroloi nogoi noaru do you think it is grammatical your answer will be probably yes because it has manages to comply with the grammatical uh, conditioning of your language assumes that no goi no aru though there are two negative formations within a single sentence but the, your language allows this okay what about the sentence if somebody uh, says that moi ghoroloi no goi no aru na thaku do you think this will be a grammatical sentence? It should be because there are just uh, in addition to two negative uh, forms, another uh, negative form has been uh, said by the speaker. But it doesn't sound very 
uh, you know grammatical or acceptable in my language so from that perspective from a native speaker perspective you you would rule out the existent existence of this kind of a sentence moi ghor loi no goi no aru na thak or something like that any any you know unacceptable forms so uh, native speakers know what is grammatical and what is not grammatical okay so they inherently know all these things nobody actually comes and tells us that this is not possible and this is possible but when you learn a second language or a, a language which is different from your uh, native language or mother tongue then you are you have to be told about the rules and the formations of that language okay we'll not go deep into detail now we come to ot's main contribution in the third point in this slide we i just read out for you ot's main contribution is the introduction of the concept of universal viable and rankable constraints so these three words are very very crucial and very remarkable contribution ot has in the field of linguistics and more precisely in the field of phonology so there are constraints we already talked about uh, the constraint but we said also that uh, we are going to discuss more detail uh, analysis of constraints in a you know uh, in the due course of time but for the time being remember that these constraints are always universal as i said there are there are a set of universal constraints that are operative in all languages then those are violable okay so those can be violated by languages it's not that they, these are the constraints and uh, every every language has to uh, oblige with them uh, there are certain languages which not even uh, conform to one single uh, you know constraint that is defined by ot grammar and those violable constraints are rankable that means some constraints have higher rank over others and some uh, some constraints are lower rank than others okay so these are the three main um, characteristics or features of constraints universal viable and rankable okay so these constraints affect linguistic structures which may be in conflict with its other okay in the last point of this slide we talk about how ot resolves these conflicts as we say it that these are viable that means constraints are at place in in conflict with it with its other okay uh, one constraint comes forward and tries to conform linguistic structure of a language and then the next constraint says that no i will not allow this to happen i will uh, i will make it different for example if i say that a particular language x wants to have all the syllables uh, you know conform to cv structure only like ba pa etc one one consonant and one vowel just cv structure but uh, there will be another constraint that it will require that there should be cvc structure that means that bat teat etc so there will be always conflict between the constraints so constraints are always viable that means one constraint will win over the other depending on its rank and that ranking is language specific the constraints are universal but their ranking is language specific so going back to the uh, earlier example when i said that Uh, let's say let's assume that there are there are two constraints cv and cvc so one language will adopt cv that means uh, it will it will have cv as the higher rank constraint and cvc as a lower rank so all the uh, syllables of this language will be of cv structure that means all the words will be just batata patti pitti etc right so one one consonant one vowel one consonant one vowel so string of cvc structure sorry cv 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 structure okay but the other language will may have the cvc constraint getting higher rank than cv structure so all the words or all the all the uh, you know all, oh yes all the words will have this kind of a tit pit tit 
tat tat tat. So all will have this kind of CVC, 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 CVC sequences. Okay, so it depends which constraint a language will select as its higher ranked one. That depends on the language's behavior. It will select. It it can. It has the capacity or it has the right to select the constraints. Okay, so OT resolves these conflicts by ranking the relevant constraints. The higher a constraint is placed in the hierarchy, the more important it is that it be respected by grammatical forms of languages. Okay, so this is a brief account of how optimality theory actually works. Of course, there are more details that will come up in the next sessions. But for the time being, let's just recapitulate what we have discussed. So the main contribution is that languages have the capacity or have the right to select its language specific ways to rank the universal constraints. And the constraints are universal in nature. That means they are underlyingly all of the constraints are at work for all languages. But every language selects different rankings for those universal constraints. Okay, so uh, again, let's recapitulate quickly. Le constraints are universal, constraints are viable, and constraints are rankable. So these are the three important features of constraints. So these you need to remember and very clear about it. Thank you very much for watching my video.